Hello Floss Tube friends! I am Lisa and this is my channel Cross by Floss where I talk about the love of cross stitching and life blabbings and all of the things. So today is Sunday, May 23rd and I um, this is Floss Tube number 39 I believe. So um, okay, life blabbings, what's happened? Not a whole heck of a lot. I mean, it's been two weeks, right? What has happened? Last weekend, I had the little. Um, she had, uh, her mom and boyfriend had a, um, mom's boyfriend, had a couple of um, parties to go to, and, uh, and they were going to be super late at night. So we just decided, you know, to have a Grammy little sleepover. And uh, that was that was fun. And she got to go to the restaurant that she wanted to go to for her birthday or wanted, you know, from for her birthday. And uh, so she was thrilled. And then um, this weekend I have her again because, again, another party. One had been postponed from the week before. And, and so we got to do that again. And then she's getting menchies. So, you know, she's golden. She's so happy. She pretty much got everything she wanted for her birthday. The restaurant she wanted, Grammy's meat sauce, which we had for dinner last night, and um, spaghetti sauce. And uh, menchies, which she wanted. And what was the other thing she wanted? No, those were the three things, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so she she's happy. She's so happy. <laughs> And even funnier, so at their house, their water tank is not very big. And in the city of Seattle, water is uber expensive. Like their water bill is almost twice the amount of mine, even when they all lived at home. And um, and so, you know, they, they try to conserve water as much as they can. And uh, so when she comes here, she has the longest showers, which is what she's doing right now. So hopefully it will last long enough for me to do this video. <laughs> and if you hear some creaking, that's because the bathroom is right above this room. And so, and she's in there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what's all that's been going on. Um, Mr. G came home a couple of times in the two weeks. No, just once in the two weeks, right? I don't remember. He's only, he comes home really for less than 24 hours and then he's gone again. Um, there was a little drama on the last time though, on Friday, he left Friday morning. He came home Thursday morning and uh, his truck has been having some radiator issues and, um, and it's overheating going up hills. Obviously, you know, when you're carrying 80,000 pounds, you know, even, even a car can overheat going up some of the hills during, you know, warm months and stuff. And so that's what was happening with his truck. And his truck is fairly new. And so he is, um, you know, he's concerned about wrecking the engine. And uh, so the last time he, they had it in the shop, that's one of the things they were supposed to look at. And I guess it didn't get fixed because on his trip home, he hit was it North Dakota? I, I don't remember where he was, but they were in the 80s and he was going up, you know, quite a few of the hills carrying 68,000 pounds and, um, and his truck was going into, you know, quite high temperatures and so it wasn't fixed. And so they weren't sure if it had been fixed by Friday morning, apparently it is. He's out there this week and we'll see. We'll see. In fact, he's in Arizona today. I'm like, should have gone on this trip. I would have dropped off in Arizona, Ubered my happy self to the attic. And then, you know, either Ubered, no, not Ubered, rented a car and then met him back up and then gone on, you know, on the trip with him. I mean, we got to plan this better. <laughs> Any who's it, that's that's about it. Okay, cross-stitching, what did I get done? Okay, <laughs> um, not gonna lie, not a whole lot because I've been doing the mirror mania vlogs and I have so enjoyed those. So let's do those, the mirrors first. So um, each, each Monday in May, I am starting a new mirror, Mirabilia. I have a lot of them 
And, um, and so I decided, you know what, I, so many of them are either kitted up, have the beads, have something to them that I'm like, Lisa, just do the mirabilias. Why are you afraid of the mirabilias? Just do them. And so I thought May, perfect month to do mirabilia, Mira May. What am I calling it? Mira mania. <laughs> so every Monday, picking a new mirror and um and so week one was red week two was fairy flora and so each day I kind of do a vlog style and then um Saturday morning they go up pretty early well early for me um because I'm not a morning person and uh they go up and you get to see the progress that I have made for the week and um it's been a lot of fun to do so this was the progress that I did, that I made on Fairy Flora for the second week. And I started at the bottom of her dress. And you know, funny enough, I am really not a pink and purple girl. And when I saw this pattern, it it did not scream like, um, it's, it screams more like white to me, not, not peaches, pinks, and purples. And while, yes, there is some in there, I thought that it was, they did not seem as, um, bright as they are here. Now, I'm sure that once I get the white in and, you know, things blend a little better and everything, and you get the beads in, that, that probably will be toned down. And it's not a problem anyways, because it's beautiful. It is really beautiful. And like I said, I'm not a pink, pinky purple kind of girl. I had very carrot red hair growing up and my mom loved to put me in reds and pinks. Neither one which are my favorite colors and pink I it, I just I just did not. And you know, I was one of the very few people that had true red hair um growing up around my neighborhood, the circle, anything. And so, you know, then you put this poor little skinny girl with bright red hair and it was carroty red hair. Um, it is really toned down. <laughs> it started darkening up when I got pregnant. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it was not my favorite. And so I'm a little scarred over the pinks. And then I get a daughter who um, doesn't super love pink. Actually, she liked blues a lot. But I have a granddaughter who loves pink and purple. And so this will probably go to her at some point. Um, but she's beautiful and I do like her and the colors are stunning. They really are. Um, this is done on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color. I should know this mm -hmm. in the color. Oh goodness. Um, touch of gray, 16 count touch of gray. And so that was my progress on her. And I really did enjoy each and every stitch in her. And the nice thing about mirrors is, is that there are lots of blocks of color. Yes, there are some places in the color that do have like maybe two or three stitches, in some cases one stitch. But I try and find out where that is in relation to my pattern to another color. And I'll travel that, but weave it underneath. Now that doesn't work with light colors. If it's a dark color to, you know, and weaving it under, I won't do that because then you can see it through the fabric. So I won't do like a green underneath white or anything like that. But if it's white, uh, you know, just a few stitches of white going into a green, I will totally travel that, you know, the white into the green, no problem. I just won't do the dark colors into the light colors. So I try to look at my patterns beforehand and see that, that whatever that's the case. Okay, week three was Millennium Angel. And every day I had the hardest time saying Millennium. I kept calling her Millennial Angel. It's Millennium Angel. And she's also a beauty. And I have loved stitching on her as well. And again, see all the pinks, all the pinks. <laughs> now red, she was red. I don't even think that there is a pink in red. Maybe there is. Like I said, in red, I was really surprised there was brown. Um, but yeah, okay. So I also started her, oops, I have my needle sticking in there. I also started 
Millennium Angel on the bottom. I was going to start her in the top, but um, there was a lot of white, a lot of white. And so I just decided, eh, let's, let's do some color. So that is what I got done in five days on Millennium Angel. I did start at the bottom and these are big blocks, blocks of color in there. There is like a navy, that's the 939 DMC, and these are all in DMC threads. Um, and then uh, like a green, there's two greens in there, the white, and then a pinky color. And uh, yeah, I just, I just really loved working on this. So super pretty. Now this is done on a Wichelt Perman 16 count Ada in the color rain and it is um kind of a bluey gray greeny color almost like it's um and I think that in this picture she is done on misty blue linen or antique blue linen and uh I didn't I don't know why I didn't choose blue blue because I certainly have enough I maybe her her piece was not big enough I'm not I don't remember but I felt that this worked I, I did a floss toss um, the colors looked nice and she's stitching up beautifully on here and I like her so those were the two mirrors that I did since you last well, I last uploaded a regular video goodness sakes <laughs> Then, um, last Sunday, I did a stitch with me, and I introduced this pattern here called uh, Marie Agenon 1888, I think is how you say it. And that is what it's going to look like when she's done. And this is from an Etsy seller called Roland Designs, Roland Designs, and I'll link all this down below probably won't go up until Monday, the description box. I do them as I as I get links and stuff and then I'll add. Um, but this is beautiful, it is a red sampler. Um, and so I chose a piece of 20 count Ada that I tea stained, tea dyed myself. And then I also added a little touch of, um, after I tea dyed it, I was like, oh, that's not dark enough. And so I went to my writ dyes and I believe it was tan, but don't quote me, it's either tan or caramel. Um, and I, um, and I, uh, they were crystals and I didn't dissolve it well enough, I guess. And so I ended up having a bit of, um, blotchy like right here I don't know if you can see that but there's a little bit of blotchy from the from the dye where it didn't dissolve and I'm hoping that it will either get covered up by the red in the sampler or if not you know it just looks like maybe it got aged a little bit like a little more that, and I'm okay with that I mean it's cross stitching <laughs> And um, it's your own piece and you know, boo-boos happen and it's and it's okay. Um, this is done on, like I said, a 20 count Ada that I tea dyed myself and then I am using this Sulky Thread um, 12 weight in the color 1147. And I think it's called Christmas Red and I apologize, I meant to look before I started the video and I forgot. Um, but it is this red here. It is very vibrant, as you can tell on the piece. It's very vibrant. It's very pretty. And I am loving it. I'm loving it. So that's what I did on the Stitch With Me video last week. It was fun to do one because I haven't done one for a couple of weeks. And then... Um, I worked a little bit on my Whitgo 2021 piece. I should have two pieces, but I still can't find cinnamon stars. And again, I'm not gonna lie, I have not really and truly looked um, in my piles of things. And 
I started painting my desk and so then things got shoved around the room a little bit more than they should have. And uh, so I'm in a bit of a, like if you saw the disaster that's around me, you'd understand why I could not find this pattern. <laughs> so instead, I am working on, I think that's something behind it. Now this picture is the worst. It's unfortunate because the colors are so beautiful and I think stitched up, I mean, the picture just does not do this pattern justice in any way, shape, or form. But it is Mary Bates, 1796 by Shakespeare's Peddler. And I do know she still has it on her website, Kitten Stitcher. Uh, I did see it there and I saw it. I just did a Google search for um, Mary Bates, 1776. I'm sorry, 1796 um, Shakespeare Peddler and several, several popped up. So I think even like maybe, don't quote me, but I think one, two, three stitch, maybe something like that. Anyways, and all of the pictures are horrible. So you don't really even get like a very good glimpse at what this looks like, um, which is unfortunate. But it's gonna be a big girl. She's, she's big. Does it say what she is? Um, the stitch counts 390 by 270. So she's going to be a big girl. So I chose to do it on a, what did I do it on? I'm doing it on an 18 count vintage country mocha, Ada. And let's see if I can show you the front. That's going to be good. Mm. Seriously, she's it's on a very large piece of fabric. So that is what she looks like. And what I was originally going to do was take out the outer border um, to make it a bit smaller. But when I went online and I had a look at the pictures, it, like I just felt that it needed the border. It, it's pretty, it is so pretty. And um, and I think that it just does something for the, the piece. And... Um, so I've started two of the borders so far, I'm working my, my way into the, the words. And then, um, I started on one of the flowers in, in this border here. And this is also being a very fun stitch. It's fast and easy. Like I just take a, a colored thread and I go as far as that length will carry me. And then um, I might choose another color and go as far as it will take me, especially in this border here, because there's three colors. I don't know if you can see that. There's three colors in here. And um, and then I started with this flower. And yeah, it's pretty. It's a nice, easy stitch. So I think for my whip go goal for this time, I'm just going to use the 20 hours of the month of May and work on this one and uh, see where I get to because I really have been enjoying this stitch a lot, a lot. Actually, I have like all four of my pieces I just showed you. <laughs> okay, um, let's do, so that's it. I have no finishes. Of course, I have no finishes. Um, I have very little haul, so let's talk about some haul. Let me get these out of here. So I have been a really good girl and I've been trying to stay off of Facebook and the D-Stash pages. Mm -hmm. And I went on Facebook the other day and I couldn't help myself because this was in my feed right away. So I bought some more. Um, it's all right. So there was one, one seller, um, on a D stash page and she had these three patterns left in what she had posted and so I picked them up. This one is Little by Little Black Sheep by Cynthia Bradford and uh, I think it's uh, littlebylittledesigns.com. I don't know if that website is is still available but that's a really pretty sampler. I like that one. And then this one is by the Primitive Needleworks in God's Eyes sampler. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's really, hopefully will not be a horrible, you know, stitch to do. I don't think that there's anything weird in there. 
we're gonna find out. And then the other one is, um, uh, who is this? Maritime Cross Stitch. And this is original and historical sampler. And this is the Sarah Emmeline Morse Goodwin sampler. And this is like a, a maritime sampler from Nova Scotia. And I mean, being Canadian, of course, you know, got to buy the maritime samplers. So that one there. So that's what I bought from Facebook D stash page. And then um, I, I love samplers like samplers for a really long time and actually back when I was growing up my mom and dad we used to as a family we used to go to a lot of antique sales auction sales estate sales all those kinds of things and my mom wasn't into like the needlepoint and and uh, cross stitch back then and neither was I like I, I mean I saw them I thought that they were really pretty but I never I never thought, oh, I should start a collection <laughs> until years later. And um, and then I was like, well, of course I should do my own. Like, why do I want somebody else's? But uh, let's be honest. Yeah, I'm not getting mine done. I mean, anytime soon. And uh, the pieces that are out there, the old original pieces are beautiful. They're beautiful. And of course they're in, you know, varying... Um, uh, varying degrees of, um, you know what I'm trying to say? Oh, goodness sakes. You know, some of them are very aged and disintegrating. Some of them are, uh, put behind glass, never touched. Some, you know, probably sat in a closet and just moved from place to place is, you know, in a box somewhere. And so they were preserved. That's what I mean. And, um, and so, you know, there, there's, there's just so many out there. And then of course you can go on eBay and, um, you know, you can get lucky and get some for not a whole lot of money. And then others go for whoo, a lot of money. So, uh, it just depends and it depends on the, rep the reputation of the seller. But anyways, I, uh, like the history of samplers as well. And so when I got the opportunity to get this book, which is from the publishers of Just Cross Stitch, um, Sampler and Antique Needlework, this is book one. There is a book two. And book two is like mm, two to three or four times the amount of book one. Um, <laughs> and so I was able to get this off of eBay for it was not a lot of money. Like I want to say it was under $10. I was able to pick this book up. Um, it was a buy it now. And as soon as I saw it and it was a buy it now, I was like, I will buy it now. And so I spent last night perusing through this and having a good read. Um, they do, they do the history of samplers for, um, what was it for this school? And it was really interesting. It was very interesting um, about the Quaker samplers and, um, goodness sakes, I cannot find it. Anyways, there's several samplers in here in the Quaker style. Um, the West Town samplers, that's what's in this book. Um, and just, I mean, it was just so so informative and um, beautiful, beautiful samplers that, I mean, I'm, I'm going to need to do. Like this one here, Francis Jukas sampler. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? It is. It's beautiful. And um, there's this one too. And what I really liked was, oh yeah, here it is. Here's the West Town Samplers uh, Quaker Heritage. And then they talk about um, the samplers um, and even the name of the school and how, it, how it's got several adaptations of the name and how to spell it. Um, this one here, this Dorothy Preston Sampler. Oh my goodness. 
so if you have an opportunity and you love samplers, um, this was, uh, if you can find it, you know, cheaply, um, I, and like I said, it was a buy it now on Etsy, uh, eBay. I got really, really lucky. I think I was just searching one day and that popped up. Um, okay. So I know I have talked about, and I did not bring it down. I know I have talked about my R and R, um, stand, my lap stand, and I show it in, I mean, you see it in my Mira Mania, um, videos, but I also use it in my Stitch With Me videos. And I talk about how much I really, really like that stand. And so the, the person who created these stands or put these stands, sells these stands, um, he or she um, has two sizes. So the one that I bought was a smaller size. So it was an eight and a half by 11 or eight by eight. Oh, yeah, I think eight is, or maybe it's 11 by 11 and eight and a half by 11. That makes more sense. Um, uh, depending on how you, you turn it. Well, I bought the bigger one, which is uh, 11 by 14 or 14 by 14 maybe is the piece. So it came, it came just the other day. It did not take that long. I ordered it uh, two weeks ago maybe, and it came yesterday in my mail. So it came like this. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to contact the seller because when it came, it came like this. And so you see all the other corners are all, um, they are all protected. This corner did not get protected and it's got a little boo-boo. So I probably will not affect how, um, how, you know, when you put it together, it probably won't affect it at all, but I want to make sure. So I was going to unwrap this and show you guys how to work it, but first I want to take a picture of it and send it to the seller and just make sure that, that we're okay. And, um, but I love those stands enough so that I bought another one. <laughs> and then I did, um, a couple of Amazon purchases and I have to admit, I mean, I, I am an Amazon shopper. Um, Amazon is so easy and they have everything. And, you know, I have family members who work at Amazon. And so, yes, I, the, the UPS man comes frequently and uh, Odin and the UPS man have a temporary truce on Odin won't scare the living daylights out of him. And, um, and the UPS man will not ring the doorbell to scare the living daylights out of Odin. So we have an un, a uneasy truce going on. But um, I talk about my floss tags a lot and how I really like my floss tags. And I did talk about in my last Mirror Mania um, week three, I did talk about how um, I'm using you know, I have bobbins and bobbins was what I started with back in the day. Um, cause I don't believe that we had floss away bags. We may have, I may have thought that they were so expensive that I wasn't using them. And, um, and who would have thought to use snack bags? I didn't. And, um, and I don't believe that we had floss tags back then either. I don't, I don't think so. And, you know, I do, I do remember the, um, floss sorter, you know, the big thing that has all the holes in it. And then, okay, I hated those because my threads got tangled and I just, I, I dislike those intensely and I do not use those. Um, but that is my personal choice. Like everybody has, everybody has a system that works for them. And I found during my, my, um, kidding up, my projects and using the bobbins that I've had, you know, to use up the thread. And then what I don't have in bobbins, I've using in skeins and putting them on my floss tags. Um, I found that I really like the floss tags. Now a viewer, a subscriber did say, um, that she also kind of felt the same way until she kitted up a hate. And I kind of agree with that because with 96 plus colors to a hade, having floss tags may 
make that very jumbly and a lot, a lot going on. So, and I do have some haids. And currently my haids are, well, my one haid that I'm working on is um, kitted up with, um, huh, I have to think about that. I think she's kitted up uh, probably with both styles as well. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, I make my own floss tags for the most part. And I enjoy doing that, but sometimes I don't, you know, always have time to, um, if I don't have enough of one style, um, meaning round or whatever shape I've got, if I don't have enough as I'm kidding up a thing, I like my floss ring to have the same type of floss tag on it because then it's all uniform. I know it's a little weird. Um, <laughs> I realize that's not always going to work. Anyways, when I kit up a new kit, that's what I like. And sometimes I don't have the whole, you know, whatever. And so I thought, you know, I'm just gonna, everybody talks about, you know, just these tags on Etsy. And so I purchased these, I believe there's a hundred in here. Comes with the little um, jute string, which I'm not gonna need. But, and I will have to make these little holes a little bigger to accommodate the um, the ring, the binder clip, but, or binder ring. Um, but it's super easy. And then you just have to punch a hole in the bottom and then you write your floss on the back, your floss number on the back. Well, I also went and I bought a bunch of sticker books as well, different sticker books. And I'm just going to put the sticker on the front. And yes, I realized that when I put the sticker on the front and then I punched the hole, but then you kind of get this cute, you know, just, just a nice little design, just a little something, something to make it pretty. So I purchased these um, items from Etsy and they came super quick. And then this is floss tube. This is cross stitching related. So for my daughter, my granddaughter's birthday, she wanted a, um, a water bottle. She loves water bottles. She's a weird kid. She loves water bottles, all types of water bottles. And so everywhere we go, we like pick up, you know, a water bottle. And then after a while they get gross and, you know, the straws get gross. Things happen. Well, she loses them. You know, they get smacked around in a, in a bag and the writing comes off and, um, and so, you know, eventually she'll get another one and that one will, you know, either be used in the car or whatever. And anyways, she, she frequents Etsy herself. Thankfully, she doesn't have an account. She doesn't know our passwords to our account. So she'll just do searches and then she'll come to either her mom and I and go, look, this is what I found. I really like this. <laughs> Well, for her birthday, she wanted a water bottle and she found this really cool water bottle, you know, uh, ombre style, very cool. And so when she got it, her, her mom bought it for her. And so when I saw it on her birthday, I'm like, oh, that's such a great idea. So I get on and I go to buy myself one. This thing is huge. Okay, not the size she got. This one is 128 ounces, hers was 64. But what I liked about it is, oh, can you see that? It's got writing on it. And so, you know, it's got the like 7 a.m., good morning, and then 9, 9 a.m., hydrate yourself. So, you know, you're supposed to drink. It, it has these lines to give you how much you should drink throughout the day. And so I was like, I didn't look at the size. And so when it came, and this thing is monstrous. Like, it's huge. This thing is huge. Like, when you get water and some ice in here, there is no way you can carry it. <laughs> this thing is huge. So I'm going to need to buy a smaller one. But what I said to her was, this is perfect. So when we go, you know, to parks or picnics or, you know, just uh, for a drive or whatever, that I can fill this up. It's got enough water for Odin. And then we can also like refill our smaller water bottles with this as well. So um, as need be, but it's a good reminder because I know I don't drink enough water throughout the day. And I certainly don't drink while I'm cross stitching, which is weird because I always have coffee with me when I'm doing my floss tubes, but I don't um, drink while I'm doing stitching. I'm so afraid I'm gonna spill it. But 
this would be a good reminder. And then it's also a nice visible minder, reminder for me. And I, also when I'm working, I forget to drink as well. Cause you know, I, hours go by and I'm like, oh, I haven't even eaten today or I have forgot to drink something. And so it's a good reminder that, you know, if it's 5 p.m. and I'm still up here at 11, I clearly have not drank enough water. Not in this size though, because this is huge. <laughs> so another Amazon purchase. Um, but it's a good water bottle. Like hers is lovely. It's very, and she, she does, she's been trying to do a good enough job. You know, she's, she carries it around with her and she fills it up every morning with ice and water. And, um, pretty much by the end of the day, she might be at nine o'clock at five o'clock, but that's okay. I mean, at least she's gotten more water in her than we previously had. So, and I'm hoping to do the same because that's to drink some water. All right. Then... Okay, I, you all know my love of project bags, right? So who was I watching? This might have been a mention on Instagram. I don't remember, but somebody showed this really cute project bag on Instagram by a seller I had not heard of before. Um, her name is, <laughs> did she put her name in here? Oh dear. Let's see if it's on the card real quick. Sorry. Is it sorry a lot? Yeah. Punky Pearls. So her name's Heather and uh, her uh, Etsy name is Punky Pearls and I'll link that information below as well. But I purchased a bag from her and it came with a nice thank you card, which was lovely. Plus this really cute little panda sticker, which my granddaughter was like, can you save that? Oh, baby, I can't save that. <laughs> and I purchased this very pretty project bag. Um, it is quilted. Lots of fabric on the back. It's quilted. And um, I love black and white. And you guys see again, pink and red. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Um, but I just, I love this combo together. It's very pretty. Um, and uh, she put this, I like the zipper because it's, um, <laughs> it's uh, more decorative and just really pretty. And, uh, plastic vinyl fronted so you can see your your project anyways a very lovely and um punky pearls purchased yet another project bag <laughs> and then okay there is a etsy seller her name is stitch folk on instagram um Etsy. She has an Instagram, which is also Stitch Folk, and she posts things pretty daily, um, pictures daily on her thing, and she does a sale once a week. Now, her sales, you need to get in fast, and I am not exaggerating. Her things are gone between two to three minutes. Two to three minutes. She might post a hundred items and they are gone in two to three minutes. Um, you have to be fast. She's a, you know, a, a lot like Clay by Kim or even um, Under the Woolen Willow. I mean, when those things go up, you best be on it. <laughs> well, I'm not telling you my secret on how I am able to get so many bags and how I get in that first two minutes a couple of bags. But yes, I was a little gray pants and I purchased four, three, three. I purchased three in the last um, big sale that she had done that she had a few, or I think she said she had like 160 bags maybe. And I was fast. I got three. And so I'm going to show you the three and they're still in their wrappers and there's a reason why. So this is the first bag. And they all come with this lovely little, um, it's a thread keeper or needle keeper. Um, 
it's got um, uh, it's got felt inside and so you know you can keep your threads on it and it won't go anywhere it's got a nice little snap but anyways that this is the first bag that I purchased this one here and I believe that this is um, blackbird fabrics I believe blackbird design fabrics this is the second one I purchased. Oh, that's really bad glare. I'm sorry. Oh, yep, bad glare. Um, and that's the fabric on the outside. They're all vinyl fronted um, project bags. And then this is the third one that I purchased. And yes, I did. I got all three of these bags in that sale when she sold out in three minutes. And I'm not telling you my secret. <laughs> purchased the three bags because I'm keeping two and one is for a subscriber. So I did not do this when I hit 2000 subscribers and I kept meaning to and um, but this seems like a perfect opportunity. So if you've made it this far into the video, this will be the giveaway for my 2000 subscribers and you have the opportunity to potentially win this bag here with the inside, which is the whole reason why I've not opened it. Um, it will come with her card. So if you, she does not do special orders. She just does, does sales, but at least you'll have the, you'll have the name. Um, but this is going to be for the 2000 subscriber win giveaway. So if you are interested in that, in your comment, if you can put, hmm, bag. <laughs> I am not creative at all. Bag, just put bag. Um, and then you, I will do a random comment picker like I always do. And one lucky viewer, subscriber, um, will have this bag mailed off to you. Now, unfortunately, I'm only going to be able to do this in the United States. So if you have a state address, but you live outside the country and it can get to you somehow, as long as it's a state, a United States address, I will mail it there. Um, but I just um, postage and, you know, still with COVID and the whole deal, um, I'm just going to do it for the US right now. So. In the future, future ones I'll probably open up, but um, unfortunately not for this one. So if you are a US resident, I have a US address, you are over 18, you um, are subscribed to my channel, which I hope you are, and um, don't say giveaway in the comments or anything, and um, you would like a project bag from Stitch Folk, then comment bag below. So that is, that is um, the giveaway for that. And stay tuned because I do have some other stuff. Um, okay, so I want to mention uh, Kathy Haberman from Hands On Designs. Oh my goodness, you guys. She has a newsletter. If you are not subscribed to her newsletter, you should be. She has um, a new newsletter that came out over the weekend, and uh, she is releasing a new, a new three-part series for the kitchen, and it's so pretty. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Um, she showed the first one already, and then like the laundry series that she did, um, the series will have a part of the pattern, a, a bonus pattern in it but you've got to read her newsletter because down at the bottom it has a little something something mm -hmm. so um you've got you've got it there's no link for a freebie or anything like that but you need to read read the newsletter you know so many of us like i i'm guilty of this all the time i skim a newsletter i skim an article i skim you know emails and sometimes i miss things and, um, but don't miss this. Go. And if you're not subscribed to her newsletter, subscribe to her newsletter because Kathy has some great information always in her newsletters. And, um, I love them. I love them. So that's one thing. And then the next thing is be stitch me. Whoa. Oh my goodness. I was so excited. 
um, she has these mystery boxes and I've been missing the mystery boxes that I've wanted. And um, because every time that I finally find out about the mystery box, they're all gone. And so um, I happen to be cruising. I don't, I don't even know what yesterday and she, oh, Instagram. And she was like 30 minutes until the new Halloween pre-order is mystery box will be up. And I'm like, oh, there's a Halloween mystery box. It is like April. No, it's May. It's May. And already the Halloween, I mean, and y'all know how I feel about Halloween. So I'm like, got to get on that. Right. So I am refreshing her website page. And I'm like, I am going to be getting me a box this time and not, you know, so I did. <laughs> um, I, I don't even know what I'm going to call this. It can't be a happy belated birthday. Um, and I already took my mother's day gift. So I'm going to find a holiday and I'm going to, I'm going to happy whatever to me. So there we go. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to the mystery box because you guys, I've seen some unboxing from previous ones and they're spectacular. So, um, okay. And now how about spotlight on a stitcher? So, um, I do these in my regular style videos where I find uh, new or new, like new floss tubers to the community or new to me because, you know, you might have, you know, several hundred or even several thousand subscribers, but I didn't know about that, that person. And um, so I do a spotlights on a stitcher shout out. And this time you're getting a twofer. This is, this is fun. So I stumbled across, I'm not entirely sure how I stumbled across them, but they are two sisters who have been watching Floss Tube for a while. And um, they decided to contribute to the community because they've loved the Floss Tubes and thought that, um, that they should also put together a Floss Tube. And I'm super happy that they did. So there are two sisters named uh, Victoria and Sarah. So I'm going to start with Victoria first. Her name is Victoria the, let me get it right, the Happy Stitching Nurse. She is located in Las Vegas, I believe. She currently has three videos up. Um, and she has, um, she has a grandson. Um, and in the very first video, oh my gosh, she said right at the end, you know, that he was on the bed behind the camera and um, that he was getting ants in his pants. And it was so funny. And he giggled. Oh, so cute. So cute. And uh, so anyways, she does a lot of um, kits like dimensions kits. And uh, she's she's got a couple of um, she's got one called the Aurora Cabin, which seen that I've kind of looked at it a few times and went mm, I really like that and then she's also doing a stocking a dimension stocking and uh, she's got like a, a variety of she does smalls and large patterns um, she tries to keep I think she said she tries to keep one large pattern going or one large chart going and then a bunch of little smalls so that she feels like she is you know accomplishing something which yeah, that's an awesome idea. But like I said, she's got three videos right now. She is a nurse, a registered nurse. Um, and she is a self-proclaimed self nerdy, um, Trekkie, you know, or Star Wars nerdy, um, which we are at this house as well. And, um, and as my son-in-law is, or future son-in-law is as well. And so um, we're, and we're getting a little into it as well. <laughs> and um so it was it was fun to see you know her she's just she's just fun so go go check her out um the other interesting thing that I I thought was she mentioned that she came from Canada and that she's lived in the U.S. for a while and I'm not clear if they were born in Canada and then moved to the States or if they were born in the States, moved to Canada and then moved back. I'm, I'm not clear um, or even where in Canada they're from. Um, but the, I'm, I'm the same way. I was born in Canada and moved here several almost 
23 years ago, 23, 24 years ago, somewhere in there. Um, and so we've been here a long time. And the other thing is, is that her, yeah, they're both doing it, I believe, uh, are both doing the Reflections of Canada, the Ink Circles pattern, which I also am doing. And you know, I can't, I can't, still can't find. We're not going to talk about it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do a search for a few missing patterns, a few missing charts of whips that I have going on. I don't know what happened. Anywho, she is doing hers in a red, is she doing it in a dinky dye? I think a dinky dye red and um, it's beautiful. So it's nice to see somebody else do that chart. And um, okay, so go check her out. The second one is Sarah, her sister, and she is the Can-Am stitcher. So I think it's an amalgamation of Canada and America, I believe. I don't know. I don't think she said that, but that's my assumption. And um, and so, yes, the Can-Am Can stitcher. And I will link both of them below. Now, Sarah started her floss tube because her sister challenged her. And I'm guessing they don't live in the same state because they talk about like uh, FaceTiming each other during stitch time and, you know, talking with each other and that um, Sarah had purchased a chart for uh, Victoria and then sent her money. So I'm guess from that, I am guessing that they don't live close to each other. And, um, but Sarah has two videos up and she uh, does blackbird designs she's doing um she doesn't like she has said that she doesn't like to have too many whips going at once because they nag at her in the back of her head hey you haven't finished me yet why are you starting a new one <laughs> i don't have that problem i have about 80 some odd whips now and they all talk to me and i just tell them that they just need to just wait their turn um they all get there uh, but she, she doesn't like having, you know, too many. And so they both decided to do Stitch Mania and they both decided that what they were going to do for Stitch Mania was, uh, on every Saturday in the month of May, they would make a start on a new, new piece that, which means that there would be five new starts for the month of May. And so she had mentioned, Sarah had mentioned that that meant that that would put her at 10 whips because she currently has five. And now this is really bringing her out of her box and, um, or out of her comfort zone. And, uh, like, yay, Sarah, good for you. <laughs> and, uh, but she has already finished one of her whips, um, of the Blackbird design she picked for Mania, five Blackbird designs out of the Autumn, Winds of Autumn book, I think it is. And she's already finished one and fully finished it as well. So beautiful work. Go check her out. So both sisters, Victoria, the happy stitching nurse. Oh goodness, I want to get it right. Yes, Victoria, the happy stitching nurse. And then um, Sarah, can am stitcher and again like I said I will put those both down below okay so now how about we do the giveaways for um, the last shares that I had so unfortunately Katie did stitches did not reach out to me I checked everywhere I even went to both my email accounts checked spam filters did the things went to my Instagram to make sure that there was no message from her and unfortunately, Katie did, did, Stitches did not reach out to me, and it's been a month. And so I, I um, did the random comment picker again, and the winner of Witch Witch, aka Cordelia, is um, Mary Macri. Yes, Macri, um, which I will put that in here somewhere. Um, so congratulations, Mary, if you can, uh, get a hold of me, uh, my information is in the description below. It's uh, crossbyfloss at yahoo.com, or you can reach me at crossbyfloss, inst my Instagram account and send a message there. I just need your address 
and I will get that out in the mail ASAP. And then from the last video I did where I actually had a finish on this little piece here, um, I had said to say boo in the comments and the winner of this one is Viv's Crafts. And again, put that here somewhere um, or here, wherever it goes. And um, so Viv's Crafts, if you will get a hold of me, same, um, crossbyfloss at yahoo.com. And uh, I will get that sent out to you right away as well. So um, that's it. That's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed. Um, the coming weeks, I am going to, well, there's going to be some new numbers for WIPCO. So I'm going to um, hopefully have those patterns available. And <laughs> for real. And um, I will have a new Mira Mania going. And there are five Mondays in the month of May, but the last Monday is like only one, you know, there's nothing else for the rest of the month. And, um, but I'm going to still do five Miras and so five weeks of Miras. Um, because again, I have so many and I would like to get at least a start in them and hopefully next year really concentrate on each one of them and um, I'm looking ahead at the things that I want to do. I am getting a lot of whips and which I am okay with but I am getting a lot and I would like to have some finished. So ooh, the other thing I wanted to mention was Acorns and Threads. Be on their newsletter as well because they announced um the 2021 Pacific Northwest Stitchers Summit, I think it's called, 2021. And um, and and uh, I know when they sent the email out that there were a few spots left. Um, yeah, I believe. And if not, they have a wait list now, I'm guessing. But uh, with the finisher at Acorns and Threads, I... I did manage to get in a spot in that uh, Pacific Northwest Stitcher Summit. And um, I will have to go, have to go and pick up my stuff for that weekend. And, um, and when I go and do that, not only will I probably do some shopping, but I also would like to drop off a few things to have the finisher do there. And um, because she's done beautiful work, I've seen some floss tubers who have had items done by the finisher. Oh, I can't remember her name. Um, and they're gorgeous. And so I would like to take a few of the finished peaches that I have, but I also have a couple more that I would like done. And so I'm just going to get them all done at one time. And because uh, I get there once every couple of months and see my son and do the antique rounds antique mall rounds and do a shopping trip at acorns and threads and frankly let's just be honest it's a very expensive weekend <laughs> so uh and you know i'm in no rush to have anything finished and so she can take all the time she wants because we won't get there for a couple months again so um i'm excited for that but yeah, I guess that's pretty much all I've got. So thank you for um, putting up with me and listening to the blabbings and my ramblings of going on. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a really wonderful week. And um, I will be back next... I've lost two days. Um, I will be back uh, Saturday. You'll see a, a Miramania Saturday video go up. And... I'm excited to work on this Mira. She's beauty. She's beauty. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that that's all you guys. So um, until next time, see you then.